getting the first match from a Python list or iterable. At some point in your Python journey, you may need to find the first item that matches a certain criterion in a Python iterable, such as a list or dictionary. The simplest case is that you need to confirm that a particular item exists in the iterable. For example, you may want to find a name in a list of names or a substring inside a string. In these cases, you're best off using the in operator. However, there are many use cases when you may want to look for items with specific properties. For instance, you may need to find a non-zero value in a list of numbers, find the name of a particular length in a list of strings, or find and modify a dictionary in a list of dictionaries based on a certain attribute. This course will cover how to best approach all three scenarios. One option is to transform your whole iterable to a new list and then use index to find the first item matching your criterion. Here, you've used index to find that Tiffany is the first name in your list with seven characters. This solution isn't great, partly because you calculate the criterion for all elements, even if the first item is a match. In these situations, you're searching for a calculated property of the items you're iterating over. In this course, you'll learn how to match such a derived attribute without needing to do unnecessary calculations. Any code you see entered in a REPL will be using the enhanced REPL bpython. It offers a number of enhancements over the standard REPL, including code highlighting and suggestions. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. How to get the first matching item in a Python list. You may already know about the in Python operator, which can tell you if an item is in an iterable. While this is the most efficient method that you can use for this purpose, sometimes you may need to match based on a calculated property of the items, such as their lengths. For example, you might be working with a list of dictionaries, typical of what you might get when processing JSON data. On screen, you'll see some country data from the country JSON repository being saved as a dictionary in a Python file. This will allow the data to be imported quickly across multiple REPL sessions, saving you time if you tackle this course across multiple sittings. You might want to grab the first dictionary that has a population of over 100 million. The in operator isn't a great choice for two reasons. First, you'd need to have the full dictionary to match it, and secondly, it wouldn't return the actual object but a Boolean value. There's no way to use in if you need to find a dictionary based on an attribute of it, such as population. The most readable way to find and manipulate the first element in the list based on a calculated value is to use the humble for loop. Instead of printing the target object, you can do anything you like with it in the for loop body. After you're done, be sure to break the for loop so that you don't needlessly search the rest of the list. Note that using the break statement applies if you're looking for the first match from the iterable. If you're looking to get or process all of the matches, then you can do without the break. The for loop approach is the one taken by the first package, which is a tiny package you can download from PyPI that exposes a general purpose function first. 
This function returns the first truthy value from an iterable by default, with an optional key parameter to return the first truthy value after it's been passed through the key argument. Note that on Python 3.10 and later, you can use structural pattern matching to match these kinds of data structures in a way that you may prefer. On screen, you'll see how you can use this technique to match a country with a population of more than 100 million. Here you use a guard to only match certain populations. Using structural pattern matching instead of regular conditional statements can be more readable and concise if the matching patterns are complex enough. Later in the course, you'll implement your own variation of the first function. But next, you'll look into another way of returning a first match, using generators. Using Python generators to get the first match. Python generator iterators are memory efficient iterables that can be used to find the first element in a list or any iterable. They're a core feature of Python, being used extensively under the hood. It's likely you've already used generators without even knowing it. The potential issue with generators is that they're a bit more abstract and as such, not quite as readable as for loops. You do get some performance benefits from generators, but these are often negligible when the importance of readability is taken into consideration. That said, using them can be fun and level up your Python game. In Python, you can make a generator in various ways, but in this course you'll be working with generator comprehensions. Once you've defined a generator iterator, you can then call the next function with the generator as an argument, producing the countries one by one until the countries list is exhausted. To find the first element matching a certain criteria in a list, you can add a conditional expression to the generator comprehension, so the resulting iterator will only yield items that match the criteria. In the example seen on screen, you use a conditional expression to generate items based on whether the population attribute is over 100 million. So now the generator will only produce dictionaries with a population attribute of over 100 million. This means that the first time you call next with the generator iterator, it will yield the first element that you're looking for in the list, just like the for loop version. Note that you'll get an exception if you call next and there's no match or the generator is exhausted. To prevent this, you can pass in a default argument to next. Once the generator has finished producing matches, it will return the default value that's been passed in. Since you're returning none, you get no output in the REPL. If you hadn't passed in the default value, you would get a stop iteration exception. In terms of readability, a generator isn't quite as natural as a for loop. So why would you use one for this purpose? Well, in the next section of the course, you'll be doing a quick performance comparison to find out.